Hey, what's good YouTube? My name is Craig and in this video, I am sharing five actionable, practical, and easy applied tips for designing a career that you love. This video will help you to establish a new sense of direction, find clarity and confusion, and create a tangible plan for your future. And by watching this video, you will discover that you alone have the power to create a career that brings out the best version of you. Are you ready? Yeah, my name's Craig and like I'm a business coach, published author, and serial entrepreneur that really specializes in helping working professionals transition into full-time entrepreneurship. And when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's not necessarily creating a business, it's really about creating a, a career and a life that you don't have to run away from. Because I feel that my life calling and my personal mission is helping people become the entrepreneurs of their lives so that they can live with intention, purpose, and leave a positive impact. And so as I've begun with my introduction is that my definition of entrepreneurship is not necessarily about and or centered on creating a thing or a business. It's about creating a life and a career that you don't have to run away from. And so COVID unfortunately and fortunately has provided us all with a crossroads within our personal and professional lives. And for me, I believe this is a critical moment for us to really reframe, gain some altitude and decide how we're gonna move forward and reposition ourselves for the new future of work and just the new future that we live in. And so this infographic is something that I came up with where I just see a lot of people right now in this analysis paralysis mode and they're, this, and they're kind of lost and they're deciding how to take full control of their life and transition uh, to the next step. And so for me as, as a coach, I help people get from analysis paralysis all the way to the mountaintop, which is freedom, where I believe that's where people are living life on their own terms and where they have developed or created a career that they don't have to run away from. And so, like I said before, I, I'm a coach, but I coach from experience. And for me, I just wanted to take y'all on a journey before I get into the meat of this conversation and the, work, and the worksheet that I gave you, just to show you as a living testament and as a testimonial, how I live with purpose, intention, and how I've created a career that, that I love. And so for me, um, everything began here in Ohio. I'm, I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, born and bred, but I moved around a lot uh, because of my father's job. And things were often very difficult for me because I had a speech impediment, I had a chronic stuttering issue, I got picked on a lot. And so for me, I spent a lot of time uh, by myself, but that's where I started to figure out some of my natural gifts and talent uh, growing up. And so we eventually, got transplanted in, into Cleveland and that's where I started to get a love for athletics and that's what really kept me grounded through all these changes in my life but little did I know how having to adjust to new cultures new environments and being constantly uprooted would prepare and adapt me for situations like we're living now with COVID-19. So I eventually uh, landed in, in Columbus uh, went to New Albany High School and I was a really good athlete and uh, I wound up getting a, a Division I football scholarship that took me out of state. And so as I had prefaced before, it's like my whole identity was wrapped up in athletics, just like a lot of people's identities are wrapped up in their current occupation or job. But sometimes when we lose that um, identity, it, takes, it throws us off tilt. And so when I went down to Sanford University in Birmingham, Alabama, my whole identity was wrapped in athletic. But my sophomore year, that all got stripped away from me when I had a career ending in injury that led me into a spiral of depression. And so for me, I, I compare that analogy of losing my football identity to a lot of people losing, losing their jobs and their identities as working professionals at this moment. But as a coach, I've come to realize that none of us are self-made and we all need help getting to our goals and helping uh, ourselves to rethink and, and grab some altitude when we're going through difficulties. And so for me, that person who intervened in my life was my Spanish professor who convinced me to study abroad in Costa Rica because she told me dropping out or, and making this emotional decision would kind of put me on a, on a rough path. And so this is one of the reasons why I decided to get into 
coaching because we all need help getting to where we're going. And none of us are self-made. And I just always wanted to give credit to this specific individual for getting into my life and coaching me to make a better decision. And so going to Costa Rica was just the best thing that could have ever happened to me because I experienced another language, experienced another culture. And it also gave me this uh, perspective and possibility of living and working abroad in another country, which I never thought was possible. And so this kind of leads into this first tip that I want to give people. And so one of uh, the way I like to coach is I like to use quotes because I think they're so powerful with explaining what I'm trying to put forth. And so we all understand that life is hard enough without the added fear, panic, and anxiety. Our souls are crying out for love and encouragement, but we all need to take a moment to breathe deep, get present, and find some compassion for yourself. And so the first tip for creating a career that you love is after you go through a traumatic event, like losing your job or who knows what, is that we first have to rest. We have to take time to relax, clear our mind, and mentally recover. And that's what I was able to do when I went to Costa Rica. I was able to remove myself from my emotional destabilization and gain some clarity so that I could think and make the best decision that I could make for myself. So moving forward with my own life journey, like I got hooked on, on traveling. I got bit by the travel bug and I got entrepreneurial as well because I didn't have my full athletic scholarship anymore. I had to figure out how to make ends meet and I started DJing. And I used those profits to invest in studying abroad again th the next summer. And uh, it was just an amazing experience. And for me, that just locked me in on this future of becoming an international businessman. And so after I got done with my studies in Alabama, I was taking my parents' advice to go and get my uh, graduate degree. And they, they told me that because they always have been invested in education. Like, that's the thing that you have to do. And so I did it and I knocked my MBA out in less than a year. But after I was done with my courses, I was interviewing in New York and San Francisco at tech companies, but I just didn't see anybody who looked like me or thought like me, even though a lot of these hiring managers were promising that I'd have a great career and that I'd elevate within these organizations. But just something inside of me was just like, Craig, this is not the best decision for you. You have to live with purpose and intention and follow your gut to make the best decision for you. And so ultimately, instead of venturing into corporate America like I was supposed to, I took a risk and made a decision to serve in the Peace Corps. And that was pretty much my first decision that I ever made for me, for me exclusively. I didn't have anybody else telling me to do this. I made this decision for myself in my best interest, and I'm so glad that I did it. So going into the next quote and the next piece of advice, this, this quote from Jim Rohn is just very, very powerful. And it says, if you don't design your own life plan, chances are you'll fall into someone else's plan. And guess what they have planned for you? Not much. And I felt that in my gut when I was listening to these hiring managers just telling me that I was just going to have a great career, but I just didn't see that. So I had to make my own decision and join the Peace Corps for myself. I'm so glad that I did. And so the second tip I want to provide is that you should strategize. After you've taken a, a bit of time to rest and clear your head, Next, you want to analyze your options, create a plan, and then start executing on your plan. But realize you can't really strategize until you've cleared your head and, and taken uh, of, um, some time to really rest and relax. But tip number two, write it down, is just to always strategize after you've taken time to clear your mind and gain some solid ground. So moving forward with my story is that serving in the Peace Corps was just an incredible experience. I mean, I got the live with the host family. I was doing import exporting, fair trade certification, really got into some high level business coaching, working with some big uh, corporations down there. But I also taught youth entrepreneurship across the country. And uh, I fell in love with Peru. And even before I got there, I knew I wanted to start a business in that country. I just didn't know how that was going to manifest. But on the side of me doing my Peace Corps service, I actually started teaching myself how to distill. And I got really good at it. And I basically decided to immigrate back to Peru after I got done with my Peace Corps service to follow that dream of opening my distillery. And so one of the things that makes me unique about my story is that I'm actually an American immigrant. I got moved back to Peru by myself, opened up my dream business on the beach, and it was incredible. I mean, we actually outgrew the space, got four products to market in less than nine months. 
But as we were expanding, I approached my landlord to get an extension on my lease. And she basically confessed that she didn't own the property. And I was defrauded out of my business because I had no legal right to be there, even though I signed a fraudulent contract. And that was my second big experience of quote unquote failure. But as I write in my book, I define fail as nothing more than a first attempt in learning. And so just like COVID-19 has really brought up a lot of unexpected events that we can never uh, um, forecast, this quote by Marianne Radmarker really encapsulate that beautifully. And she says, unexpected events can set you back or set you up. It's really all a matter of perspective. And so for me, I don't like to see the glass half empty. I always like to see it half full and figure out how I can learn from my life experiences. And so tip number three, after you first rest and then strategize, you wanna reflect and just realize that setbacks are inevitable, but every life lesson can be transformed into a learning lesson. So whether or not you lost your job or your hours have been cut back, you can reflect on what's going on to figure out how can I gain some actionable nuggets of wisdom or life lessons from what I'm going through. So moving forward, after I lost my distillery in Peru, like that really threw me off tilt and I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do with myself. And I'm so blessed to have a very supportive family. And I found myself in Baltimore on my sister's couch reflecting uh, after I rested, I, I created a strategy and I started reflecting on all the life lessons I learned. And I just figured it would be a good idea to move to DC because that's where I had a lot of connections from my Peace Corps and government network. And this moves into my next piece of advice. And this quote is from Sylvia Earle. And she says, hold up a mirror and ask yourself what you are capable of doing, and what you really care about. Then take the initiative and don't wait for someone else to ask you how to act. And even though I was off tilt and even though I was sleeping on my sister's couch, like it was up to me to make the decision that was going to move me forward in life. And that's what I did. But in order to do that, you must be resourceful. So this is my fourth tip for helping to helping you to create a career that you love is that be resourceful and don't be afraid to reach out to your network, and ask for help. And that's what I did. I started reaching out to my people for connections, reaching out to my government connections. That's how I landed a, a job in the startup space in Washington, DC. But when I was working that job, I still wanted to always maintain my entrepreneurial creativity. So on the side of me working at an IT startup, I launched my company Visa Jump, where I was basically um, a consultant for the embassies, helping them to process travel visas, leveraging my blockchain platform. And that was a really great experience, but the startup I was working at got sold. I got a severance package. And basically I realized that working with embassies in the travel space wasn't a long-term uh, venture because everything's based upon geopolitics. And so both my Washington DC experience came to an abrupt end. But I realized that I needed to come back home. And so ultimately I moved back to Columbus in 2019 to support my family. My, my grandmother was aging. She transitioned on, uh, God rest her, uh, bless her heart, rest her soul. And then I also came back to support my grandfather. But it's been really good since I've come back to Columbus. And I just feel like I'm, I'm really in my calling and I'm, I'm living a life of purpose, intention, and I'm leaving a positive impact because I've made a decision a long time ago to become the entrepreneur of my life. And that leads us into the last tip, the last piece of advice to help you develop a career that you love. And this is one of my favorite quotes from A Nice Neem. And she says, the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. And so tip number five is that you should always be bold. After you let your network know that you need help or that you're figuring out how to be resourceful, just don't be afraid to take a risk on yourself and share your gifts and talents with the world. And when you're able to share your gifts and talents with the world, that's when I believe your best position to create value, not just for others, but also for yourself. And so when I got back to Columbus, I was still trying to find my way again. And as I've told you this story about my life and how I've meandered through different cultures, through different life experiences, through different careers, um, I, was a, I was approached by a publisher and they're like, Craig, you should share your story with the world. And initially I was reluctant to do that, but then I realized that by not sharing my story with my clients and people that I was working with, 
I'd be doing them a disservice. And so my book, uh, Burns of a Dream, uh, was published on March 30th. And since it came out, and since other people have been able to hear this story, it's really helped to change my life. And it's really locked me into my purpose of helping others become the entrepreneurs of their lives. And I've really felt that I've come full circle, manifesting my dream into reality and creating a career that I love. And what I do now as a business coach and multidisciplinary coach doesn't feel like work for me. And uh, I just really love where I'm at in life. And of course this could change, but right now I really feel that I've developed a career that I love. And this is how I help to show people by living example that it's possible if you follow these five steps that I've put forth earlier. And so just to recap, the, the, the five tips that I'm giving you to help you develop a career that you love is one, after you go through a traumatic event, take time to rest and heal yourself. After you get done resting, take time to strategize and create a plan that you can move forward to intentionally and purposefully. But as you're creating that plan, also reflect on how far you've come and get to know yourself. Because a lot of people ask me, Craig, where do I start? Well, I tell them, if you don't know where to begin, look within, because we all have the natural skills and talents that we need to move forward in life already within ourselves. Then point four is like, after you create that plan to strategize and you've, you've strategized and you've reflected, be resourceful and let your network know about what you're working on and ask for help. Because like chapter 25 in my book says, closed mouths don't get fed. And you can't get help if you don't tell people you need help. So never be afraid to ask your network to connect you to a new opportunity if you need that. And then five, it kind of, it kind of counters off of be resourceful, but always be bold. And don't be afraid to ask for what you deserve. Because if you never ask for what you need, or if you never put out in the world what you need and what you want, you'll never get it. In sum, I really and sincerely hope that those five tips are able to help you design a career that you love. And by now, you should realize that your life is in your hands. It's not up to your boss. It's not up to your parents. It's not up to your spouse. It's not up to your kids. It's all up to you. So just realize that. And whenever you find yourself in a bind, just go back to these five tips and apply them and see where they take you. Because time is of the essence and it's up to us to really make the most out of our lives and the talents and skills that we've been blessed with. So my question for you is, are you currently happy with your career? Why or why not? Drop your comments below and share your thoughts. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to become the entrepreneur of your life, you can start this process today by subscribing to this channel. Also be sure to click the bell so that you can be notified for whenever future content is released. Until next time.